It's all about the Benjamins, baby. Because we just watched Bad Ben and things are about to get spooky on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and crazy Chris Hudson. Welcome, welcome, oh everybody, back to another episode of B-Movie Mania. I am your host for this evening, Bad Jason. And <laughs> along with me, as always, is Bad Mike, Goo Goo Gaga, <laughs> and Bad Crazy Chris. Bad, bad, <laughs> crazy Chris. Bad, crazy Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. We oh. watched a movie called Bad Ben. And it was, it's by Nigel Bach. It stars Nigel Bach. And only has Nigel Bach in it. Um, I he literally does everything. I think he does everything. Like in the movie, because it's it's a it's a ghost movie. It's a found footage ghost paranormal movie. Ugh. He does have some people Ugh. that were pulling around uh, furniture for him on cords, but that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a couple shots like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the basic <laughs> synopsis. This is going to be super quick. Uh, Tom Riley, played by <laughs> Nigel Bach, to it. <laughs> Tom Riley buys a home from a sheriff's auction with the intent to flip it, and it finds out it's haunted by something called Bad Ben. That's it. So, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. like I said, it's a found footage movie, so mileage may vary. For, you know, if you if you like that sort of thing or not. But um, let's find out if we like it and do some quick takes. Quick takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Quick takes. Bad Mike, what do you think? Oh, dear listener, um, pause the podcast right now and watch this movie if you <laughs> haven't seen it. <laughs> like, just it's eighty-two minutes long. You, it, it's it's an hour and twenty minutes, guys. Just fucking just pause it right now. Go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. Maybe somewhere else. And watch Bad Ben. Uh, don't watch. The other ones, not, not that you shouldn't, just we're talking about specifically about Bad Ben. So don't watch like the three or four other Bad Ben movies. Just watch Bad Ben. Yeah. Do it. Do, Do it. It. It, you won't, you, it won't be a waste of your time. And, and if I may, since you sort of introduced it, there, there are five movies in the Bad Beniverse. <laughs> there is Bad Ben. Bad Beniverse. <laughs> Steelmanville Road, which is a prequel. Which is a prequel. Yes, Badder Ben. There's Bad Ben, the Mandela Effect, which I believe is sort of an alternate reality version of Bad Ben, which I have not seen that one yet. And then the <laughs> Crescent Moon Clown. Uh, so there's a lot of these. But anyway, uh, Bad Crazy Chris, what do you think? I have a feeling it's a very different opinion. <laughs> this is no longer your home. It's time for you to cross over and watch the movie peace awaits you there this is no longer your home it's time for you to cross over and watch the movie peace awaits you there this is no longer your home it's time for you to cross over and watch the movie peace awaits you there <laughs> and that's not it even sounds a quote. like he said the same thing i said <laughs> it does that's not even a quote from the movie either chris just said that <laughs> yeah that's not a quote from the end of the film um so um the movie costs a total of three hundred dollars. Um, I sort of somehow well, end up getting picked. Like I, I usually try to pick a movie like this every season. I guess it's just kind of become a thing. Um, yeah. Evidently, what the the budget breakdown was: seventy five dollars went to a harness that he had to wear, and we'll get to why later. Um, that he he considered returning it to Home Depot, 
but he did not. <laughs> oh God, I wish he had, Nigel. <laughs> Fuck well, yeah, dude. Well, then we wouldn't and then get use the sequels, it, Mike. Return it. We wouldn't get the sequels, Mike, unless he That's bought a new true. one every time. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars went to the other people who just pulled strings. Like and made <laughs> furniture move. I don't know. That seems like a crazy I wonder, rate, but that's what he said. I, I want. I wonder how much of that three hundred dollars was his mortgage payment because he used his own goddamn house for the movie. And what a house, yeah. man! That was a big house. That's a nice house. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was pretty impressive. A, yeah. If if I may quote him, it's a real beaut. It's a beaut. <laughs> I don't know what he did to win that lottery. <laughs> oh, there's so many good lines in this movie. Oh um, God. So, okay, other just quick facts. He shot it with a GoPro, from what he said in an interview that I heard. Um, the movie is doing quite well on Amazon Prime, which is where you should go watch it. Um, he made, Although it's also he, on YouTube, if you it uh, is. don't feel like shelling out. Correct. He put all of his movies out on YouTube because he wants the Bad Beniverse to be seen. So he just released them all. So you can see them all on YouTube, too. Um, he's doing pretty good with the money he's making, from what he was describing. Good. There was no script, and in fact... No wait, shit! Yeah. What? I am <laughs> no so script? surprised. No script. And in fact, he told wow. an interesting story um, about how he was originally shooting a totally different movie, and he had eight <laughs> actors lined up, and they all dropped out. So he got mad, and he was frustrated mm. in his car, flipped on his iPhone, and just started recording. And that was the opening shot that made it into the movie of Bad Ben. So <laughs> that makes so makes, much sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, one of you guys want to talk about that opening? How that opens up? I, I mean, he's driving in his truck. He's coming home from uh, the sheriff's sale, where he kind of mentions that he got a he got a house. Uh, he he would have paid anything for it. Yeah. He really liked this house. Apparently, he's never seen the inside. Well, yeah. he did put every penny he owns into this thing. Yes. So he's in the house for his whole life savings. I have never seen. I mean, I don't. I talk to myself a lot, but I've never ever seen or heard of anyone who talks to themselves as much as as this guy. Okay. You haven't been to my house. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> what, you do it or your roommate does it? I talk to myself quite a bit, but um, but my my uh, my roommate, friend of the show, Christopher Arneson, love you, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. I know you're listening. Uh, and he won't deny this. Uh, sings to himself constantly. Because <laughs> everything is a song to himself. So Well, he's kind of like uh, a theatery type of guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's an improv boy. No, yeah. it's not a problem. Their songs are great. Well, I'm just saying, to, to counter Hudson's comment, well, you should come and live at well, my house for a bit, and everything's a fucking musical. Well, okay. Mike, Mike to, be, to be fair, though, singing might be pushing the boundaries, but when he starts swearing at ghosts, then oh, you've got a man. problem. <laughs> Tom swears a lot in this movie, and I love it. <laughs> I only your kids watch it. There's a lot of coast. There's oh, a lot of cusses. I'm a fan of some creative <laughs> swearing, and I feel like Tom just nails it. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, yeah. So this opening shot, he gets to the house, and he's the first thing he does is he walks through it to kind of establish that all of the camera angles, because the family that lived there before had cameras up all over the place in every room except the bathrooms. So. He walks the house, sort of acting like he's looking at it and inspecting it, but really for the audience, it's like, okay, here are your camera angles that well, you're going I gotta, to I, I have to. I have to say real quick, though, just to warn the viewers, should they watch this movie, that a good chunk of the first third of the movie is Tom on the phone with the security camera company. <laughs> yeah, the cloud storage guy. <laughs> 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 See, okay, I thought... and. Please feel free to, uh, you know, disagree or, or bring up other points. I felt like the way he communicated how everything worked in the story was pretty good, considering yeah. this guy's in a movie by oh, yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the cloud storage guy was really effective, actually, because he, he's on his phone, which I thought that's what you're going to warn about, Chris, because I know you don't like <laughs> first-person view type stuff. Yeah, I got uh, I got motion sick pretty early on, but... Cause there, most yeah, of there's the a movie lot of him holding... Fun. There's a lot of him holding a phone, supposedly, though I guess it's a GoPro, right? But either way, it's it's FP, it's first-person view. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he's got that in there a lot. But then he, he once he gets the cameras, establishes the cameras, and they're in each room, uh, and then he gets on the phone with the, the, the... Eventually, after a couple incidents, he gets on the phone with the cloud storage guy to, like, 
have him help it set it up. So we established that like character connection with literally a character that's not there. <laughs> yeah. And then yep. and then later on that is used in a really effective way where the cloud guy like seems to take a little interest in what's going on in this house and sees the footage and like confirms Tom's like worst fears and all that kind of stuff. It's uh well, I don't know if he has worse fears. Tom doesn't seem to give a shit about anything. Tom, but oh, oh. he just wants to flip that fucking house, you know. And if <laughs> you know if that writing lawnmower works, bonus. Yeah, I love Tom Riley so much in this. Like, <laughs> just yeah, we got to get to the to to the goods here. So he, <laughs> while he's upstairs, he hears a sound, and I believe he says, "Hey, god damn it." <laughs> And he runs down. <laughs> he runs downstairs, and the furniture is all over the room. Oh, the, yeah, everything's been moved, and he doesn't know why. So he thinks somebody's messing with him, and somebody's in the house. And so he calls the cloud storage guy and has him sets up this plan where every single camera is going to record for a week solid, and that's kind of how you get the footage for the movie. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting though. As much as the furniture is moved and shuffled around the room. Um, Bad Ben really he he leaves the TVs alone and the electronics off limits. Well, so that was very very nice of him. As we will come to discover, though, Bad Ben is a child, right? So maybe he couldn't reach the TVs. Oh, could be, yeah. But in my experience, children are the ones who really love to break that shit. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Maybe we could address that with Nigel someday. Because I want to be friends with him, <laughs> guys. I don't. I don't want to just rail the conversation right now, but it's somewhere in the timeline of the movie right now that I realized in my second viewing that I am not watching the right movie, and I am, in fact, watching Bad Ben the Mandela Effect. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. I was wait, re-watching wait. it before this taping. Okay. <laughs> I was re-watching it before this taping. And I clicked on it, and the cover is, like, the same except for the tiny caption that says the Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah. They're almost the same. And so I'm watching it, and, like, it's 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 raining at the beginning. That didn't click with me until I started re-watching it again, and it's not raining at the first one. Like, it's almost shot for shot, but literally redone every shot. It's fucking insane. <laughs> weird. It's, and there's little weird differences. And so, like... So I'm watching this, and he starts walking around the outside property at night, which he hasn't done yet in what we've said. Yeah. And I'm like, when did this happen so early? I thought there was the furniture and all that stuff. He's walking around the back of the property, and he finds a grave, digs up the grave. There's a creepy doll in it. Yeah. And, like... And he, he refers to it, he constantly refers to it as this creepy little bitch. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, no, the doll, the doll wasn't found in the grave, though. The doll's later on in the... Well, that's, wh- yeah, in, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching this movie and going, I don't remember this doll being part of this in the grave. What's this? And then, like, the doll starts haunting the house right away. Like, it plays on the piano the first night he's there. And, like, uh, stuff, weird stuff happens. And I'm like, I don't remember this shit this way. This is weird. And then I suddenly clicks on me. Oh, fuck. Am I watching the wrong one? And I'm watching the Mandela effect. Like, I was having a Mandela effect moment. It was, it was, Whoa. it is very well done. Nigel, holy shit, dude. It's so fucking well done. That is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. From what I understood, yeah, it was a remake of, of, Bad Ben. Not, but it's sort of like purposely a, a remake, but in the same yeah. universe, but like a different dimension or something. It's it's the so for anyone who is not familiar with the Mandela effect, it's this concept that people are remembering things, not that they're remembering things incorrectly, like that Nelson Mandela died in <laughs> in prison in the eighties, which is what it gets its name from. Some people genuinely believe that they remembered Nelson Mandela died in prison in the eighties, um, or a, a common one is that the Baron. Stain bears were called the Berenstein bears, but now they're different. And so, like, there's this weird, like, t- a dimension shift that people think. There's, like, other, you know, uh, parallel worlds type situation. And so that's what this other movie's playing off of. And it's, like, just slight differences enough. And, like, the dialogue is the same. He takes down all the the, the Christian artifacts and he finds the big Bible in, in, the, in the house the same way in this movie, except... There's little differences. It's weird, man. Wow. I will definitely check it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, totally in on that. <laughs> Thank God we've got both versions. 
Yeah, sorry. I just at this point is where I went that far into the movie till I re- I was just being confused <laughs> the second time I watched it. But anyway, I'm sorry to derail. That's okay. The furniture keeps moving in the house. The furniture yeah. keeps moving. Now it what? does. Um, at one point, Tom gets locked out of uh, his house. Well, <laughs> Bad Ben locks him out, and it's probably my favorite line of the movie. Yeah. Um, anybody remember it's this? Great. I wrote this down, Jay. Fuck my life. God damn it. <laughs> yes. Fuck my life. God damn it. <laughs> and it just keeps uh, going from there. It's, it's so he's great. so great. And then, um, question for you guys. What is that bird noise that's outside in every night scene? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. It's a, a moonlight cockatiel or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's some animal or bird living outside of his house, but it's on every night scene. And, uh, yeah. We see shadows at night moving outside. I, well, that's what, one thing I wanted to talk about is as as silly as the the swearing and everything gets later on in the, in the movie. It's it's kind of effective seeing the shadows go against the wall and seeing the security camera footage, and you're just like seeing movements. Just you don't quite see what it is, and that's that's. I thought that was pretty effective. Yeah, totally. And one thing I liked about this whole part is like, okay, the power goes out, right? And, um, of course, Tom says, you got to be shitting me. What now? <laughs> <laughs> everything, what did I do to win this lottery? Yeah, everything is mild annoyance. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no fear in this. Nothing man. gets him down. Nothing. I just, I love the fact that it's played, this horror movie is played so <laughs> against what you would expect. Like, he's just pissed off at everything that happens. Like, it's not fear at all. I just thought it was oh, so cool. And so, but at this point, when the power goes out, he switches to his phone, right? And normally, that kind of shot annoys me in these kind of movies. Because it's sort of like, well, would that be your first reaction? You know, like, oh, like, let's whip out the phone <laughs> simply so the audience can see what's happening. But in this case, it makes sense because Tom believes somebody is messing with him. And is in the house, yeah. and he wants to catch them, you know, on camera. So that's why he's running around looking at everything with his phone and narrating. So I thought that was pretty effective, actually. It's another sort of clever use of the found footage style to accomplish his story. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? What else happens uh, when the lights are out? He, he checks out the attic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, checks out the It's cold up it's there. It's cold. It's cold inside. He's got to he, he's got to find this rogue air conditioning unit that is just freezing <laughs> he has, the house. No, he he sells that air conditioner. I mean, did you see the way that that blows the blinds? Oh it will knock you off the shitter if you're sitting underneath the, the <laughs> yes. vent. It'll blow you right off the toilet seat if you're under the vent. <laughs> well, did you yeah. notice the house has is so big it actually had two air conditioners? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nigel's doing pretty good for himself, He's I guess. He's doing all right. He's got a big house. This bad Ben money is just bonus. <laughs> it's rolling in. He's got a couple different areas of the house he can't get into. Just the basement, right? The basement, and then for a little the bit, the shed. He can't get into the shed. Oh, right, yeah, he's locked out of the shed, yeah. He didn't have the keys. Yeah, he walks the grounds, um, and this is a very important part. You want to say what happens when he's walking around in the grounds? Oh yeah, he well, first of all, his he's got like 9 acres here and it it backs up against the marsh. Like there's a marsh back there and he doesn't want to go all the way back there, but he goes far enough back just enough to see what he's what he's got, what he what he bought at the auction. Mm-hmm. And he turns around and he sees like some sort of like pet grave or something for there's a rock on it and a little like cross made of uh, sticks and like a little child's uh music box kind of thing that mm-hmm. it's got to be at least 40 75 years old or something yeah and uh yeah and he takes that because he can get he can get some cash for that it's an antique again he's just (laughs) he's just like well that's going on ebay right there (laughs) (laughs) he just wants to sell so many things he's gonna make a fortune for buying this house oh my god but but it's great because it's clearly some sort of grave and you know you're watching a horror movie it's creepy and he's like (laughs) He just, like, just tears it apart. Unfortunately, I don't want anybody finding this shit back here. So. <laughs> it's on his land, man. He just bought it. He so totally he just desecrates like, it. Getting rid of all that. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Uh, we get some more scenes of, you know, like, the shadows moving outside and everything. It's pretty constant. Once it starts, 
like it doesn't really let up. He finds some cool shit in the shed. What's he find, Mike? <laughs> Uh, well, he finds oh uh, oh he finds a sweet ass snowblower. Oh yeah, just oh, yeah. a bonus. Oh yeah. <laughs> if it works, if that's if it works, it's like three or four hundred more dollars, <laughs> yeah. right? Like it's great. He's gonna make um, so much money selling everything he found at that house. It's <laughs> great. Yeah. He also finds a trash bag with a chest full of knives in it and mm-hmm. uh, a, a baby blanket with blood all over it. That explains yeah. why there's not a fucking knife inside the house. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They're all in the chest in the shed. <laughs> he, he opens it. He opens the bag and he's like, this better not be, this better not be what was out, what's buried back there. Yeah. And then, and then he, he says, holy shit, I probably shouldn't be touching this stuff. It's probably evidence. <laughs> I joke, but I could. That could be what it is. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. No shit. This yeah. is the one point. Right. Okay. I don't. I know. I mean, Tom would not call the police, but for me, as the viewer, as all of us, as the viewer, we were. I'm sure all of us just. No, you fucking call the authorities oh, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. If for if for no other reason, you cover your ass. You're touching evidence of a dead baby. Right. <laughs> absolutely. Um. Well, and later, not to- Tom. Not Tom. Tom has his own way of doing things, and it seems to work okay for him. Um, It works out. (laughs) Later that evening, he's sleeping in his chair, and he gets a call from about security, right? This is where he starts to figure out what's going on, because this is what you alluded to earlier, Mike. He gets a call from the cloud storage guy, because Tom thinks there's like a camera lag. So when he sees stuff that's moved around, he just thinks that, oh, the camera didn't click on, and the action happened and then the camera clicked on so it didn't see it but the cloud storage guy sends the footage and tom reviews it and pretty much just in his very calm way confronts that he's dealing with the supernatural dude how the hell is this possible (laughs) well it's so well it's the few minutes after this he's standing in his living room and bad ben starts moving the furniture around and right in front of him and he's he moves it back and the bad Ben moves it again. Moves it back. He just says, "Stop it!" Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't care that there's a spirit here. It's awesome. Yeah. And then when the uh, bad Ben opens up the front door, Tom oh, runs yeah. and the he, somehow there's a hatchet just readily available right there. <laughs> and he he grabs a hatchet to go confront the spirit. <laughs> Oh, it's I think, so good. I think that's real. That part's really well done. Like because because with the front, the way when Bad Ben opens that front door, what has just happened on the screen for us as a viewer and for Tom technically is he's watched that footage from the cloud storage guy. Mm-hmm. So he saw he saw video of the furniture moving around with no one doing it, and then he saw the shot of when he got locked out of the house. So you see the front door close on him. And then we cut out to see like the the living room security camera and and Tom talking to the cloud storage guy and then creepily darkly that front door just goes creep. Yeah. <laughs> that was really Which well is done. what you just saw, which I think was really like it really connected you to that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, "Oh no, 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 no." <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got, I've got, to, I've got to take issue with something you said a moment ago, that, Jay. That he doesn't care that there's a ghost in the house. Um, a few minutes after the stuff that we're talking about now, there's he. Let me, I'm going to quote him here because I wrote this down. Mm-hmm. Having ghosts or spirits in the house is creepy and is going to make this house hard to sell. So I think <laughs> That's he cares. It's very true. <laughs> so okay, he cares for that. He reason. does he cares care for that reason. <laughs> Simply because of his investment. Like, that's... It. Yes. Yeah. It's not the fear of death or anything. I'm not scared. I'm a Christian. <laughs> we do get an important scene of, with the music box. And he asks questions. And when the um, when the answer is yes, we hear the music from the music box like this. And then if the answer is no... You hear silence like this. Ben, did somebody hurt you? <laughs> Holy fuck. I was kind of uh, almost nodding off early because it was late. And and honestly, as much as we like the one-liners, this movie's a bit slow. And so I'm just kind of like, uh, and then bang. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> did not Nigel did say that he considers that the biggest uh, scare of any yeah. of the movies. Not just this movie, <laughs> any of the movies. Wow. Um, wow. Well, it's, a, it's a tough one to top. You know, from there we move into a very intense scene. 
in the kitchen the next morning when he's on the phone with uh, whoever sold him the house. <laughs> oh, my oh. favorite lines in the movie. Right what, here. what was your favorite line, Chris? <laughs> well, there were a couple. <laughs> the first one is, I know I bought the house as is, but that means like plumbing problems or electrical problems or a bad roof. Not like somebody's been slaughtered in a house. <laughs> well, my other favorite one is he's pretty angry at whoever he's talking to on the phone. <laughs> he's just like, yes, I know what caveat emptor means. Do you know what go fuck yourself means? Do you know what go fuck yourself means? <laughs> <laughs> he's so annoyed. He's so angry over this oh. goddamn ghost. Oh, it doesn't stop there either. Fuck you, you fucking whore. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. The next day, he talks about how the grave he found, it's all dug up. And he's just like, I'm not going to overthink <laughs> it. The music box is also gone. So he can't oh, find yeah, the yeah. music box. He's just like, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, because this is, this is then that night the power goes out again, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and he hears a rap tap tapping mm -hmm. upon the attic door. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we find some big stuff up there. Mm -hmm. And so this, yeah, this is where, like, it's... It's nighttime, so it's got that green light night night vision kind of look to it, and he like, it's it's pretty creepy, you know. I I, I get creeped out every time he walks up the stairs. This is like <laughs> this short suit of armor up the top of the oh, stairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's right, and I am just waiting for that thing to fucking come to life. Oh yeah, I thought the same thing. And then, he, and then you remember this was a three hundred dollar movie, right? And hey, one of his kids could have been in it. I don't know, uh, but. But like so, so he he hears this. He's falling, falling this knocking throughout the house, and he goes finds the attic, and that's where it's coming through. So he opens it with one hand, opens up the attic, and pulls down the folding ladder, climbs up there, and is looking around, and it's just weird. And then suddenly the power kicks back on, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's cold, and there's a Christmas tree. Oh, and there is a smell. There's something, <laughs> something must be dead upstairs. Something's gross up there. <laughs> but this is like the, our first introduction to the attic. Mm hmm. Which, which, which he crawl. Well, is it our, uh, either way, he crawls around, right? And this is where he finds the other bag of shit. Is that right? He finds, yeah. um, the crucifix thingy or like, like in a sort of, what, like a pentagram or something made out of sticks. And then, yeah. An urn and a candle. And a, and a voodoo doll. And a voodoo oh, doll. Voodoo yeah. dolls like a little family color. of voodoo dolls. <clears throat> There's a mom, yeah, yeah. a pop, and a little baby Ben, and they all have pins <laughs> stuck in them. <laughs> and immediately he's like, well, this is all getting thrown away. All right, all I know is this shit's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just tosses it. <laughs> you know, this, this, is, this is just real proof about the... The dispensable generation we have, everyone. This is what the lifestyle we all live. We just throw anything away I mean, we don't want. I mean, those are perfectly good voodoo dolls. Why wouldn't you want to keep those? It's about this time in my notes where I, I just have written, like, Tom is not the guy that a ghost would want to move into their house. Like, oh, yeah. You're the ghost. Yeah. You do not want Tom Riley moving in. That, and it's your responsibility to scare this guy out because it's not going to happen. I honestly think that the ghosts, <laughs> the ghost genuinely feels that way because the way the ghost acts at, from like this point on really yeah. is, is, is just like it's pissed off at Tom, like not in a ghostly way, but in like an annoyed way <laughs> because well. it's at the end of this, he like. No, there's another time he's up in there, up in the attic, right? And there's he finds the yes. urn has been spilled over. There's ashes everywhere, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And and the ghost, oh, the God. ghost writes in not your home in the ashes <laughs> immediately. Yeah. And then Tom, yeah, Tom scrubs it out and just yells. Well, I got news for you. It is my home. You don't scare me. If you want me out of here, you better do more than paint and dirt. <laughs> and, and he just, the ghost gets mad and then like s turns the power back off or on or whatever, off again, slams the attic door, locks him up there. And like, it's this whole thing or yeah. whatever's going on. Like, it's just throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah. It totally well, is. 
Well, and it does beat the shit out of him later at one point. It, it does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the same night. Once he get he like, oh, yeah, that's right. It locks him in there because he starts saying shit to the ghost. It locks him in the attic and he's like, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is my house. Get out. So then, yeah. So the ghost lets him out then. And so he goes out. He goes to bed, and then the ghost just beats the fuck out of it's, him in, sl- in his sleep. Bed. <laughs> it's a supernatural <laughs> yeah. blanket party. It's, <laughs> yeah. so stupid. it's a real, like, uh, a full metal jacket moment yeah. with the ghost in him. But it's just Nigel Bach acting it out by himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. So, so Chris, um, let me ask you. After uh, the ghost beats up Tom in bed, <laughs> does Tom just take it and, and sort of throw in the towel? <laughs> No, no. In fact, Jay, I believe I wrote this this line down, too. <laughs> Fucking ghost. Want to fuck with me? Well, I got something for you. And he burns off Ben's shit. Think I'm going to lose my entire life fucking savings over some haunting bullshit? Yeah, he buries all the stuff. He buries all the stuff back in the grave and puts the rock on it and says, Now stay the fuck in there. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He says, now stay the fuck in there, and then he, like, pats it down with the shovel, and he's like, you better be the fuck out of my house. <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't know why I said burn. He reburied everything. Oh, that's great. It's great. Oh, and, okay, God, this is then so where good. he finds the drawing. And, and learns a little bit more about the identity. Yes. Because he brings yeah. the Christian artifacts back into the house from the garbage. <laughs> just to I make the which is man, great. pretty much. And, and I, I love his line. with because <laughs> He took down like a framed version of the Lord's Prayer. And he's yelling out, look what's back. The Lord's Prayer. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh I think it's, I think this is also really clever in the film. Where at the beginning, he's like, oh, what's this shit? Let me get rid of it. So he takes all the Christian like stuff and puts it in the garbage. And then he's confronted with this ghost and he's like, well, I'm going to try to get rid of it. So he brings it back in. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah. and so Smart. any yeah. normal movie formula <clears throat> would mean this is going to help keep the ghost away. Mm-hmm. But it does not. No. No. Well, I got to say, it's really, it's a good thing that garbage hasn't been picked up yet. But it's still <laughs> different. I actually have a, a Bach fact about that, if you want to hear it. Oh, well, you got a Bach fact? I have a Bach fact. Um, he said he got a, a lot of flack or questions about that Bible and, and how he threw it in the garbage. But he wanted to assure all of the viewers that it is, in fact, safe and in good condition and back in his home. Okay. So, Chris, this he goes around the house and is sort of trying to kick the ghost out with uh, was a candle, I believe, right? Um, and this yeah, is yeah. directly the part that you took your quick take from, I believe. This what does he say? This is my quick take, yes. This is no longer your home. It's time for you to cross over. Peace awaits you there. This is no, longer, no longer your, your home. home. It's, time it's time for time you to cross, cross over. over. Peace, Peace awaits, awaits you, you there. there. This, this is, is no longer your, your home. It's, it's time, time to, cross cross to cross over. Peace, Peace awaits, awaits you there. there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I banish you. Get out! And then he mows the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> wouldn't you do that when uh, if you banish a ghost? Yeah, because it sort of seems to work, right, for a while. Yeah, totally. He put the Christian artifacts up. He did the, like, two-minute-long repeat of that with a (laughs) candle and whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. He's mowing the lawn. He's he's getting things ready. It's great. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be fine. Tom gets back from going out to a nice dinner, and he comes back You get rid of a ghost. You got to treat yourself. Yeah, he's done a oh, lot yeah. of work lately. He's put a lot of work in on the house. He wants to have a nice dinner. Absolutely. He comes back home to find the cross is on the floor, and there's a voodoo oh, doll shit. of Tom well, knife yeah. to the wall. Yep. And, oh, uh, boy. Oh, that does not put Tom in a good he, place. He's going to get that axe and bust down that basement door. I mean, yes. Tom is really through fucking around. This he is. is and it. this is the place that he's not been able to get into the entire film or hasn't bothered to really try we're gonna find out where the smell comes from like mm-hmm. the whole thing yeah we're gonna find out about that pesky basement camera that hasn't been working <laughs> oh, yeah yeah yep um can we can we talk about the basement camera real quick or sure. what that implies sure just or what what why why 
Why would you have that? I guess, why do you have it in your home at all? Well, I mean, some people like, are really concerned about security, so it would make sense to have it yeah. in right. a basement. Right. Mike, Mike, think about it this way. What if instead of a ghost in the house, there were uh-huh. like an infestation of mole men? Now, no, 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 no. Now, mole men naturally will come up through the basements. And if Ugh. you want to make sure that your basement is safe from mole men, you're going to have oh, stop a security camera up in the Ugh. basement. All right? I'm just saying. Just well, saying. Well, Ugh. well, Chris, now, now, if I will say, I, and this is not me, I, I'm not saying I understand the character Tom completely, uh, but personally for me, if I was trying to make sure there weren't any mole men around, uh, I would make sure... I would make sure there's maybe plenty of shiny objects outside of uh, the Ooh, basement to yeah, make sure well. they, they flock towards <clears throat> those things. I see what you're saying. Well, still, you want to make sure they're not taking those shiny objects and bringing them back to their uh, burrows in the basement. Mm. Well, in that case, then I bring in a fat man. Oh, <laughs> and I okay. just uh, blow him away. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but hey, hey, Tom has put every penny he owns into this house. He can't afford a fat man. That's true. That's true. All right, I'm a little scared, but let's let's talk about it. What's <laughs> what's in the basement? Are you asking what's beyond the basement door, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. There's a tarp. Uh, Chris, is the tarp moving in any way? Uh, no, not that I recall. Okay. Nope. <laughs> uh, there's also a television with a blank, uh, like a towel over it. Mm-hmm. Chris, is it moving in any way? Uh, no, I don't believe it is. Okay. There was a little f- wood stove fireplace down there. Chris, was it on, on fire or moving in any way? Uh, again, uh, Mr. Hayes, it is not. Okay. Uh, there's also a child's rocking chair. Was it moving in any way? The child's rocking chair, y- yes. Yes, it was rocking. Oh, oh dear fucking Christ. It's <laughs> chilling. Oh, sorry, and Jay, what's the main feature? Uh, maybe maybe the, the candelabra of the room just hanging there. <laughs> the candelabra? Well, there's well, the I mean, chain. Just, there's a big... There's a big chain, yeah. <laughs> there's a big chain. <laughs> yeah, there's a big chain. There's also awful-looking scratches on the back of the door going Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, look like somebody tried to claw their way out. And then we see that that pesky basement camera was simply unplugged. And Tom plugs it back in. Yeah, and it's everything's fine. Turns yeah. out, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well... I don't know. See, okay, what what happens here exactly? He pulls on the chain, right? Yeah, he pulls on the chain. He's like, because it like it's coming from the ceiling, but then it goes back behind like the little wood stove or bookcase or whatever. The back into the wall. Was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when Tom pulls it, Ben screams. Tom gets murdered. He hears the scream. He gets scared because duh. Yeah. <laughs> and then he runs up the basement stairs, tries to get out, and then it just. B- Bad Ben just screeches as he pulls him down into the basement and guts him. With his own hatchet. Does we What? Did we watch a different movie? Did I watch a different movie? I just saw... Maybe this is a Mandela effect. I just remember <laughs> Bad Ben <laughs> wrapping, <laughs> wrapping Tom with a chain and pulling him into... Yeah, that's know. the end. That's the very no, end. No, that's that's, that's right. Oh, I, he doesn't gut okay. him as far as we see. I, I was, we don't I was see guessing what oh, happens okay. after Okay, okay. Because you see the hatchet on Tom as he's being drawn. Right, okay. Across oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah. I found it odd that Bad Ben just lightly placed the hatchet on his chest instead of gutting him with it. Well, maybe it saved him a trip of going back together. Oh, yeah. You know, just yeah, put sure. it on the body. He's, yeah. he's an efficient baby. He knows <laughs> uh, work smarter, not harder. So <laughs> Yes. Yep, yep. And and that is the end, folks. That is the end That's of the movie. the credits. Pretty much. Well, yeah. Very well, only, short credits. Only because... Only because the cloud storage is full at this point. (laughs) If uh, the entire cloud was, the entire internet was full of data, and we don't get to see what happens next. And I did reference... only we'd use the bigger hard drive. I did reference that $75 harness. That was the scene he wore it in. He wore a a harness under his clothes, and so when the person with the chain pulled him, he was pulling the harness. And he said he got blood on the harness, so he couldn't return it. Rating time. Okay, fellas, I was thinking about what to rate this as, and really, I don't know, nothing jumped out. I was thinking Naughty Benjamins. What do you think? <laughs> can, we, can we rate it in Good Bens? 
You could write it in good bends if you want to, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Naughty Benjamins. Okay, um, then let's go with you first, Mike. What do you got? How many Naughty Benjamins? Uh, I, okay, well, all right. So I'm not a big fan of the found footage thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I maybe, and maybe it's just because there's, like, the I don't know, the Hollywood movies, and I get Paranormal Activity and Blair Witch had a, very low budgets, and they got brought into this. But, but then they're also owned by these fucking. The prites are owned by these big companies, and they're making a ton of money off of this fucking cheap ass shit. And I feel, I just feel like that's wrong for some reason. Um, but that doesn't change my opinion on this. That's just maybe why I'm not a big fan of these these things. That being said, I thought Bad Ben was very cleverly done, and and it's 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 something that. Since he's in that genre of found footage, it's supposed it's supposed to look like it does, and in fact, I think it looks better than a lot of these Hollywood found footage stuff does look, because a lot of that Hollywood found footage stuff adds effects to the cameras. They're filming with like nicer cameras and then putting effects on it to like mm-hmm. do stuff sometimes and stuff like that. This is not that. This is a GoPro and this is uh, fucking actual security cameras. Right. Well, like it's <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> iPhone and GoPro and that's it, man. Yeah, like, it's it's great. So, like, but then also I think the plot's clever. I think um, the twist on it is is kind of refreshing in a sense of, you're right, he just gets annoyed at it mostly. It's, it's pretty <laughs> funny, uh, but also creepy at the same time. Like, there was absolutely a lot of points in it where I was, I don't think anything terrified me, but I was definitely like, no, 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 I, mm, I'm, something's going to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so... So I liked it. I, I genuinely liked this movie, and I genuinely think if you didn't stop it when I said before, fuck you, uh, you should have watched it then, but now you know what happens. Uh, but watch it now if you haven't. Like I think it's pretty great, especially, mm-hmm. especially if you like found footage. I think it would be really well done, and even if you don't. So I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it fucking 80 naughty bends. Oh, my God. Very nice. Very nice. Chris, how do you feel? All right, you know, I... Uh I agree with Mike about the found footage stuff. I really don't like that stuff. I haven't even seen any of the paranormal activity movies, and I doubt I ever will because I really don't like found footage. And I saw that that's what this was, and I came into this with really low expectations. Um, but man, I got drawn in. Like, I mean, there are some <laughs> slow there are some slow moments. I mean, because it it can drag at at times, but. <laughs> But Tom is is a compelling character. He's just such a cranky old man, just <laughs> swearing left and right at these ghosts, <laughs> and it's so great. It's just, it's very charming in a weird way. And I <laughs> just seeing him confront this shit. I mean, we didn't talk about it, but at one point he finishes mowing the lawn. And he's like, "Well, I got a nasty smell to take care of," and he just gets an air freshener. He's trying to make the smell go away, and <laughs> nothing works. And it's it's so funny. And but there's a lot of the the creepy stuff when he's in bed. Which, by the way, you see a lot of shots of Nigel in like boxers and the oh, yeah. t-shirt and, and Crocs. Way more than oh, I would yeah. expect. So prepare yourself for that. But even that's charming. But the yeah, the the scenes of of Ben creeping around the house, turning the lights on and off. I, it, I thought it was pretty well done, especially considering the the limitations this guy is working on. So yeah, only one guy making this. <laughs> this is the only one, only one real character, and it was it it works pretty well. Uh, I don't think I'm I enjoyed it as much as Mike did, but um, I'll I'll give it seventy naughty Benjamins. Very nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I agree with uh, with what what you guys had to say. I, I'm honestly, I'll I'll echo what you said. I'm not a huge fan of the found footage uh, stuff in general. I do think that Nigel Bach brought. Just, just I don't know if it's just him. I don't know if it's intentional that he made the character <laughs> yeah. this way or if it was just how the movie came about. Cause the, again, there was no script. So it was just like, this is him and this is just how the movie turned out. And somehow it does take on this charming aspect and it is different because of how he interprets and confronts the supernatural. 
and for he must have planned it out pretty well because it like the storytelling for only having one character is all done very well. So yeah, I I really thought he did a great job. I I plan to watch the other ones. Um, and before I give my rating, I would like to ask you guys a question. If you are aware that there's also a Tom Riley animated show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do, and I watched it. Oh, yeah, I watched it, oh too, and it might be my new favorite thing ever. Oh, my God. Well, now, God now I have to watch it. I saw it's, it on his website, but I've got to It's 15 minutes it long, now. Chris. It is so good. It, sh- I, it <laughs> demands to be on Adult Swim. Like it is yeah, so it literally, <laughs> it literally is Adult Swim. Like I'm, I'm confused. It, I, I, it, I can't. I don't have words. If yes. we can ever uh, get Nigel on this show, I want to ask him about that so much, and I so hope he continues to do that cartoon. And if it's a Kickstarter, Nigel, yeah. tell give us. us another episode. Tell us yes. what you need to make this, dude, because it was brilliant. Anyway, <laughs> back to the basic, the first Bad Ben. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was great. I think you guys should watch it. I'm going to go 82 Naughty Benjamins. Woo! Nice. Wow. So I'm glad everyone had a good time with it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 did yeah, not, I thought I did you not guys would get a kick out in. of Tom. I thought you guys would like the character. <laughs> oh, um, the character is great. He's great. Yeah. I would watch that character in any movie. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. And as you said, Jay, like the fact that it's it's improvised. There's not a script mm-hmm. for it. Which I get. Like if you if you watch a Christopher Guest movie and they don't have a script but they've like mapped out kind of the plot, right? Mm-hmm. But like those are fucking seasoned professionals, right. and I'm, I, I'm not saying against Nigel Bach, but he, I, I guarantee he's not a seasoned improviser no. and like that kind of a thing, right? No. Like he did such a good job. It's just it's so. It's very awesome. It's yeah. very well done in and, that yeah. sense, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> to have it start out where he was just frustrated because the actors wouldn't show up, he had a completely different movie planned, and he just got annoyed when the last guy dropped out and is like, well, screw this. He turned on his iPhone and started talking, and that's how the movie <laughs> began. So, yeah, you really have to ad- you really have to admire that because, yeah, he just got off his ass and made something with very little like help immediately. From yeah, yeah, he just immediately started. So it and was And it's cool. become a, a big franchise. I mean, five movies in this series yeah. now. That's crazy. That is crazy. So, yeah, I plan to watch the rest of them. Yeah. But, uh, well, thanks for going through this with me, uh, Bad Mike and Bad Crazy Chris. And <laughs> uh, Of course. Thank you for inviting us on this, uh, <laughs> this spooky journey. Absolutely. Ooh. Oh, by the way, do you guys want to do a uh, extra bonus Thursday little quick take of his animated the Tom Riley paranormal investigator cartoon um, absolutely yeah it'll 100%. have it'll have to be much later because I've got to meet my kids for dinner so I probably won't be home until I think probably nine but maybe even a little later no no I'm talking like in show though oh. like I'm pitching this to you guys oh so you just oh, have well, to agree and then, and then we'll do it well oh. now this has god damn now it well now we have to, to do it again because <laughs> we can talk about how good of an improviser nigel bach is compared to chris <laughs> crazy chris Hudson. oh my god holy hey, shit hey you know what you guys fell for it because i'm playing the role of a concerned dad i pulled this right out of the hat that's the character i'm playing a concerned oh. dad who's having dinner <laughs> with his children and may not be home in time to record with you guys come Brilliant. on who's the Brilliant. season's professional now mike wow really Really flipping it on us. So, <laughs> okay, talk to me. folks, look out for God our Thursday episode on Tom Riley Paranormal Investigator, the animated show. You will not <laughs> regret it. <laughs> also, watch it. And, like, watch it. We'll have a link below this, too. Yeah. We got a link for them, this movie and also for the, the Paranormal <laughs> Investigator cartoon <laughs> um, below this. And those links, so you know, those links are links to our, we have an Amazon affiliate program, right? Which you could do in anything on our website, anything that links to Amazon will always go through our affiliate, which if you buy anything while using our link, uh, we get a tiny little kickback, and that's a really easy way that doesn't cost you anything, but like gives us just a tiny kickback to help support 
the process of all the editing. Like, you, we didn't edit out that thing where Chris did a bad improvise. Uh, but <laughs> or normally was we it, might have. It was a it great was, improvisation. Improvisation. Or, or I that. was a bad improvise. We don't know which one of us was bad, but we didn't edit it out because we wanted to show you how much editing doesn't... Wait, no, does... Well, shit. Hey, I tell you uh, what, if you, you want to weigh in... Us. If you want to weigh in on who is a good improviser and a bad improviser, you can rate us and leave Leave comments and reviews <laughs> on iTunes or Stitcher or any of that where you get your podcast. So give us a, a good rating and give us um, a, oh give us a, a few nice words, or we might just stop editing altogether. <laughs> You're just gonna get the guys. Raw I've feed. had like most of a bottle of wine, so <laughs> I'm still on a dry January. Oh, uh, dry Hudson, speaking January. of dry, speaking of dry, how how wet are our t-shirts? <laughs> Very, very dry, but very comfortable. They are very comfortable. And, and, and where can they get them? <laughs> just go to our website at bmoviemania.com. There is a link on the right-hand side as of this recording. Click it, and it will take you where you can buy a variety of t-shirts in lots of colors and styles. Possibly even a hoodie or two. Some sort of jacket. That was a good read. <laughs> you said dry. Oh, hey, Chris. Yeah, that's true. What's coming up next? On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Okay, guys. I have a great movie for you. All right. <clears throat> so I just want to say, in the world of international politics, there was one man that would stop at nothing to create the ultimate kaiju film and destroy filmmaking oh, no. rivals what? on the world stage. Kim Jong-il kidnapped South Korean filmmaker Shin sang ok <laughs> oh, and together yes! <laughs> collaborated to make 1985's monster epic, Pulgasari. Uh, well, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> no, but, but then, I believe we're about to hear... A about something else Chris is going to tell us. No, no, we're watching Pulgasari. We already did! <laughs> tell <laughs> him the rest of it! No. Tell him about Gilgamesh! Oh, whatever it's oh called. shit, that's what I forgot. I forgot we already did Pulgasari. Ha, Pulgasari. Alright, well then, okay. Alright, we're just going to watch Galgameth then. It's, it's oh. a kid-friendly version of the same story <laughs> Shin sang ok made in the United States once he escaped. Oh. Uh, it's on YouTube. So let's do that one. Let's do okay. that. Perfect. Awesome. Oh, this is going to be great. Oh, boy. It's been fun, but Uh, this is no longer your home. It's time to cross over. Cross over. Peace Peace awaits awaits you you there. there. Fight you there. This is no longer your home. This is no longer your home. It's time to cross over. It's time to cross over. over. Peace Peace awaits 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 you you there. there. This, this is, is no, no longer, longer your podcast. Your home. Your home. It's time for it's time you to cross time. over. Peace awaits you so there. Easy. All right, I'll just fade that out. This is no Listen longer up, your maniacs. <laughs> Do you have a question <laughs> or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Fuck my life. God damn it.